Welcome to Expat Hoops. Today we welcome back friend of the pod and former George Mason and Delaware State player Jay Threet. His pro career is now 12 years in and started off in Iceland and has taken him all across Europe, and he joins us now from Romania. But before we get into the interview, I want to give you another reminder that we have our own home, expathoops.com, where you can find all of our past and future content and links to all of our social media and our Patreon. And now we're happy to welcome back Jay to the pod. Happy to have you on again, Jay. Happy to be back, fellas. Happy to be back. So last time we talked, we talked about all your career up until the point where you were sitting with us from Poland. Uh, right. And without much else to add there, it sounds like it got <laughs> very interesting very quickly since the last time we sat down with you. Take us through what happened. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Poland, that year I had just left Greece when I uh, slipped on a sticker and tore my hamstring. So, I mean, basically, I just, I never got completely healthy the rest of that season. Um, awful uh, medical staff with that team. Every time I got to about 75%, it's, you know, two, three practices a day, doing extra stuff. And, you know, hamstrings are tricky. So, I just kept re-pulling it. Um, so, I think maybe a month before the playoffs, I get healthy, start rolling, probably averaging about, 18, 19 in that span, and day before the playoffs, um, the game before the playoffs, I think I tweaked it a little bit. So nothing nothing major. I just felt it. So I uh, I set out the whole week leading up into the playoffs and, and, you know, to give it a go. You want to be at your best in the playoffs. So I tried, you know, to play the, in the playoffs, and it was just bumping heads with management, coaches, um, I think they didn't believe I was hurt. Um, so I, I played the first game of the playoff and it just wasn't right. So I go to them, I'm like, look, I, I cannot, like, I can't play game two. Um, you know, just give me a day. We on the road, we probably weren't going to win. So I'm like, just give me a game. And let's, when we come back home, I should be a hundred percent. I basically just needed four or five days. Um, they didn't believe I was hurt and it was like a whole thing. Um, and basically I just stopped playing because at that point I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna shut it down. Then, you know, you, you get treated unfairly, you try to say I'm not hurt. I've been hurt all year. You guys knew that. Um, I didn't get good medical advice. Uh, so long story short, I ended up having to sue the team, um, take them to bat because they didn't want to pay me my last salary of that season. Um, so that's the short version. And, you know, I ended up going to court. It took about six, seven months because a lot of back and forth to put in, uh, find a lawyer and pay the money. And I ended up winning the court case because um, it's obvious that I was hurt. You know, I have scans, I have text messages. But just going through that whole thing was like the amount of emotional sh stress that I had to deal with that year. Uh, it was it was it was crazy to be honest. So, I mean, it's just tough. You know, you, you, you had a whole year um, basically injured. Every time I got rolling, it was a setback because I'm the type of guy, I'm, if, if I can walk, I'm trying to play. Um, and, and so for me, it was like when I finally said, yo, I can't, you know, Daryl Monroe always gets on me like, bro, if you hurt, like sit down. Like, and I always try to play. And um, so I finally listened. It was like, yo, I can't play. I need a game. I need to get 100% because me coming to keep playing games at 65 75%, like, is really doing myself a disservice, especially in the results-based job. Like, everything is strictly on numbers and wins, and it's performance-based. So if I'm not my best, uh, I'm really doing myself a disservice. So that was so mentally exhausting. So you talked about the bat, which is the basketball arbitration arbit, arbitral tribunal, um, which is through FIBA. Um, as you said, you had to get a lawyer. Um, you, you know, you said you have text messages. This is kind of I don't want to say this is my area. You know, my day job is as a lawyer. It's obviously not necessarily with uh, bat and, and FIBA. But, um, you know, I, I know kind of like what it takes to, to make a case. And, you know, usually when you have a lawyer, it's somebody that's there to guide you. It's supposed to make your life, you know easier but from a basketball player's perspective where you're having to 
go to bat. And like you said, you knew you had the text messages, you knew you had the scans, but kind of, kind of take us through exactly like, you know, how long this kind of case lasts. Um, and I think you also hit on it too, where you're talking about like, you know, the emotional stress of it, you know, you don't necessarily know it's going to go your way. You have a pretty good idea. It's going to go your way, but like kind of right. take us through like how long this was and, you know, just kind of the pain of, I hate to say it, but having to go hire a lawyer. And then obviously I would hope the, the, you know, your end result is like, it was a good result. Oh yeah. Uh, well, the process was, you know, I try to do everything without court, you know, but I try to go meet with them. Um, Cause like I said, I didn't play the last two games of the playoffs. Like they didn't want me to play. Like, nah, he's kind of like, is he really not hurt? Uh, you know, I, I'm just going, going through a lot, like, back and forth with them. And I'm like, look, man, like, why wouldn't I want to play in the playoffs? I know nobody that does not want to play in the playoffs. If I could play, I'm going to play. I can't. So um, I tried to go meet with them. They didn't want to talk. Um, and then you dealing with, you know, people that are just going to lie. Like, they lied and tried to say it wasn't that serious of an injury. Like, I don't know how they're going to tell me how my body feels when it's on the scan. Um, so that's just that, like, I, I try to, uh, basically just give them a chance. Cause I'm like, you, you're not going to win this. Um, and you know, you know, lawyers are expensive. <laughs> like bat has a, you have to pay, I have to pay my side of it, their side of it. Cause they won't pay. So, I mean, all together to even start the case, it was like 10,000 euros. So obviously I don't want to, I don't want to fork up that money for money I've already worked for and earned, but it got to a point I had to do it because they weren't budgeting. So I had to find a credible lawyer that specializes in this, you know, it's just not like a civil case. This is, you know, sports related. So I went and got a good uh, lawyer out of Germany. Uh, he works with a lot of EuroLeague guys and yeah, just started the process of collecting all the information, um, everything I had. Um, I had to get uh, statements from teammates saying, you know, cooperate my story, basically. And it, it just was a process. And I think it went back and forth because this wasn't like a cut. Like, this wasn't a simple case. Like, normally the team just don't pay and it's easy. Like, they didn't pay. You show the contract. It's not really much to go back and forth about. But in this case, it was, they had to look at both sides that had to look at both sides so it took i might have started it last october maybe when it officially got filed and i mean i won the case in maybe march so it took five months or so just of going back and forth um but they didn't pay me that many so it almost took a full year for the verdict to come in from when I started it. Um, and even then I ran into problems. Like they got the money seized. I still haven't got the money. I'm still working on getting the money. They got it seized because they said I had some tax things going on in France, which I didn't know anything about. So they lost the case, got real petty and in their feelings that they lost. And basically gave my money to a third party that had nothing to do with it. And then I, so then when I found out about it, I'm like, what? I don't have nothing in France. I hit the, my French agent and going through that process. Come to find out I had owed nothing in France. So they got my money seized for nothing. Now I'm currently in the process of going through the French tax authorities to get that money back to this day. So I still haven't got that money. I was going to say, just to give you the timeline here as a listener, we last sat down with you. I think the published date was something February 1st, 2022. So we were probably talking in you know, mid to late January of 2022. So all this is going on, you know, that that's, that's the timeline here is that you're in Poland, that you had the playoffs, all this stuff happened shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. This October is probably October, 2022 to March of 2023, when you finally quote unquote win. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then this money, now, as we're sitting down on New Year's Day of 2024, is still not in your pocket despite this win all the way back in March. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, it's just, you know, on top of that, I had to go home that summer and actually rehab. 
a hamstring. So, you know, with a baby on the way. So I have all these things. I, you know, I'm owed a lot of money. Got to fork out more money to get it back. So that's just, that's just the reality of some of this stuff. And then, you know, they, the, you know, you got teams calling. And if they call them, they just saying whatever. You, you know, you know how, <laughs> you know how I go. You never, you just never know what they're going to say. Which that's also another thing that you're not usually going to get in America unless you you're, you're going to have a lawsuit on your hands because if you know an employer calls and says, uh, you know, did someone so and so work here for a period of time? Pretty much under the law, you pretty much have to say, yep, I can confirm that they worked here. And they could have been the worst employee, they could have been the best employee, but obviously the employer is not supposed to be saying those kinds of things. But you know, when you're talking about different countries, the law may be different. And yeah, some of those teams inquire in certain countries and. You've got this dispute. Even if you again have won, they're gonna say some things uh, potentially, yeah. and that's what you're like up against. All the teams in Poland were just, you know, um, stay away from Jay. He sued that club. I'm completely right. You know what I mean? But it's just they don't like that um, that you can sue them sometimes. So you know, it's coaches call coaches. Just you know, I get it. It was a lot of pressure. When that coach is a first-year head coach and the owner is just a rich guy, he doesn't really know basketball. So it's it's a hobby to him. So he's just like rolling with the coach set. So it it, it it was it was tough, man, just going through that and still going through it. You know, we we've spent a lot of time in this pod um ragging on the Polish basketball league for various reasons. For those of you who are uh longtime listeners, much of our the first few months and few um uh, guests that we had in the pod uh, would lament mm-hmm. the transit situation in Poland in particular that was rough. Uh, and it's gotten a bit better, but in the uh, the mid the mid 2010s was uh, definitely not a place where you would be wanting to travel between teams and cities uh, because usually it was by bus and usually it took twice as long or three times as long as it was supposed to. <laughs> and now, of course, we've got your story from uh, from Poland, which uh, people not getting paid in the pot is nothing new, but this is definitely one of the more um, labyrinthine processes that anyone has gone through that we've talked to so far, unfortunately. But look on the bright yeah. side, though. This, this, he hasn't gotten his money yet. It just means that when he does, that means it's the third time that he gets to come back on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep going. I, I, I just opened another case. Yeah. We might get so- into that too. <laughs> we have merch head over to the expat hoop store where you'll find t-shirts hoodies masks coffee mugs pint glasses and more it's one of many ways you can show support for the podcast so head over there and pick up some merch that link below is in the video description or you can head over to our website expathoops.com and click merch we offer a couple of different expat hoops logos and we have men's women's and kids sizes so you can get something for everyone Thanks to SeatGeek for sponsoring Expat Hoops. We recently became a brand ambassador for them. SeatGeek is a ticket app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets. They offer a 0 to 10 score on each ticket to know if you're getting a good or a bad deal. Green means good, red means bad. You get the idea. It's a really easy way to get tickets to events. Plus, our viewers get $20 off their first ticket purchase with the Expat Hoops code. Click the link in the description to download the app. Remember the code, Expat Hoops. E-X-P-A-T-H-O-O-P-S, all one word, to save yourself $20 off your first ticket purchase with SeatGeek. In the time in which you've been gone, we've only talked about Poland, and we've talked about all the issues you have there. You got another one that is uh, on the docket currently for you. Can you uh, tell us about that? Oh, yes. So after the Poland uh, situation, um, I think I was the highest paid player on that team. So you have, you know, Injury season, shorter, smaller guard. They look for reasons in Europe to to not pay you. So um, it looked like my value kind of went down. So I was turning down a lot of deals that didn't really make sense for me. I uh, I was close going to the Arab Cup. I actually signed to go to the uh, the Arabic Cup in was it in Egypt or the Middle East somewhere. And then I got a call. Um, this is probably the end of September to go to Kosovo for the FIBA Cup. Um, two month deal. I wanted to make sure I was home for my son's birth. You know, that's that's a once in a lifetime thing. I'm I'm not. And then I didn't want to take a bad deal and be stuck in it long term because nobody wanted to give me a buyout. So I was like, this makes sense. I go 
play for two months, be in shape, play on the international uh, scene, and something will come uh, in the change period around December. So that's what I did. And I mean, I went to Kosovo. It's it's probably everything you think about when you think about Kosovo. Uh, but um, playing international was cool. I think I averaged 13 and some change. Played some German teams, played a Israeli team. Um, but yeah, long story short, it paid me the first month. The second month, nothing. Didn't get paid. Um, but I had to come home, you know, for my son's birth. I normally would stay out there and wouldn't leave till I get my money, but I couldn't wait, you know. Um, my son was being born any day. And they like, you know, oh, we'll get you your money, blah, 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 all of this. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go home. That last check was due December 1st, 2022. What's the date today? The first? Not the first. 2022. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2024, January 1st. Mm -hmm. Still haven't got it. So, uh, you know, I go home and, you know, constant communication with them. And they're just like, yeah, you know, next week we should have it. Next week, next month, six months. So now I'm like, they're like, yo, Jay, just be patient. Um, we're going to get it to you. It's not like we don't want to pay you. We just can't. So I sit by that. And then I'm at home this year once again. And I'm just like, nah, I got it. I didn't want to go to court. Then do that whole process again and pay the money again. Because this is the second time I'm putting up this type of money to get money that's I've already worked for. Like, I did the job. So, but it got to the point I was like you know I'm not waiting no more I waited a year and we filed it maybe a month ago um and now we just waiting I think they have to January 9th to pay according to FIBA so only in Kosovo for a couple months yet all this again <laughs> again yeah again yes. again 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 so it's just it just comes with it, but you know I'm the type of guy like I'm I'm gonna pay the money and I'm gonna get my money. Like I think they thought, you know, because guys like me would never really go there or be in that type of situation. They probably think, oh, he he got some money, he's not gonna come get this. Like, no, I want it all. I want it all. I did work. Give me my money. So that's ongoing right now. Um, hopefully, I'll get it in the next month or two. Um. So yeah, that was that was that. We don't get the opportunity to talk to people who have played in Kosovo about on the court issues, though. Um, what what can you tell us about the Kosovo? I know you went there specifically for the uh, Super League Superliga competition. Uh, what was it like on the court there? It was different. It was different. It was different. Um, so I went strictly for FIBA Cup. I wasn't even supposed to play in a domestic league at all. Um, so for me, it made sense. I'm like six games in FIBA, but I just practice. And, but then when I get there, the coach is the Bosnian national team head coach. Oh, okay. And all of them. So it's like, all right, like he's coached in Turkey. Like he's a pretty established coach. So I'm like, all right, let me, he's begging me to play in these games. Cause they were, I think they started the season 0 and 4. So like, Hey man, just, you know, like help me out. Like come play get in the shape. It's only going to help from FIBA. So I give in once or twice um, to play to get in the shape because it didn't make sense. And, you know, to stay on his good side, he's a very, very connected coach. And, you know, me and him didn't have any problems. But uh, just just playing in Coastal, it was different, man. Like, that's not to say I'm cocky, but that's just that level is not, is kind of beneath me. So it was wild. It's hectic out there. I don't know what's going on. But I will say the atmosphere, like the fans, like it was crazy. Like almost a little too crazy. Like they throwing stuff on the court, they yelling, shirts off. Everybody's probably drunk in there. Like I even had a situation, they were like spitting on the court. Like it was crazy. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. So, I mean. Spitting on the court. That's definitely one that we spitting, haven't heard before. Like the coach, like I've seen spit go on the coach and I look up like man please don't let nobody spit on me because I'm just not I don't know what I'm gonna do but uh I you're mean, gonna have was, a bat case and you're gonna have a criminal case <laughs> if, if I was gonna be willing to take out for that I was gonna be willing to take 
but nah, it was it was it was an experience, man. It was an experience. Um, but never again, ever again. And so, actually, being in Kosovo for only a couple months, uh, off the court, what was that experience like in terms of you know? Obviously, you're very, you know, double, you know, a decade into your career at this point. Um, and I know that, you know, you're probably not necessarily going to be seeing a lot of sites in two months anyway, but what was it like trying to get adapted to off the court life in Kosovo while you were there? obviously for a brief stay? I mean, it was tough, uh, probably a little humbling to be honest with you, um, to play at the levels that I don't reach, you know, a couple of top five leagues in Europe and play well. So to go to Kosovo, I mean, I had put it in my mind. 60 days, let's just get through it. It'll pay out. But just to get there and like not have a car. It's just like the gym was right there. It was just like walking. It's like little stuff. Like, what has happened to me, man? I don't fell off. You're like, so it started playing with you like mentally. <laughs> so I just had to keep the big picture in, but it, it helped me lock in. Like I didn't really do anything. I'm in the house watching shows in the gym. Restaurant, shows, gym. Like that's all I did. And um we had a fever break. Uh, Greece was right there. It was like four hours away, so I, I went. I went to Greece for like four or five days, so that helped. But other than that, I didn't see much. I didn't see much. After Kosovo, you wind up going to Portugal. Uh, it was as we talked about off the pod. Uh, Jarn Arlich had been in Portugal the season prior. I think Mike Morrison had been as well. Take us through your time in Portugal, coming off two interesting experiences: one being in Poland, one being in Kosovo. But take us through what that next season was like. You'll wind up finishing the season in Romania, but Portugal to Romania, how did that season go for you? Well, say so I got to take you back to like my mindset of why I chose Porto. Um, so I was home, had the baby, was home for almost seven weeks um, from December 1st to like mid January. And I was like, I got to be real particular and specific about where I decide to sign to because of the last stops. Like I didn't, you know, I wanted to pick a good spot. Um, and I had a contract in France and I was waiting on it, but the coach at Porto called me personally. And um, he was like, Jay, don't worry, we're traveling, we want you. And I'm like, okay, but it was no contract. And so until I see the contract, I got this other contract and they pressing me about my passport information to come back to France, but I just got the coach's word. So I'm like, I can't keep waiting on this and, and say he changed his mind and I mess it and I mess around and lose this French deal. But um, eventually they sent the contract and I decided to go to Porto because um, I heard nothing but good things. Um, Portugal is a beautiful country. Heard nothing but good things about the club. They were already advancing in FIBA Cup. Um, they were already 3 0 in the group, the second phase. So they're already going to the Elite Eight. So for me, that was like a real attractive move. Um, to be playing internationally, keep traveling. Um, I knew some guys on the team already. I played against Brian Conklin in France. Um, Max Landis, I he played with one of my best friends, Jamar Abrams in high school. We played with him in Germany. So all these guys start reaching out to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, okay. Portugal, I mean, Portugal League is really top-heavy. Um, it's Benfica, Porto, and Sporting. So I'm – I really just got to be Ben Fee in a championship. Porto hasn't really won. So I'm I'm all in. Talk to the coach. I decide to go. I get there. I don't think I realize how big that club is in that country. Like the media that came with that, fans, Instagram pages. It was, like when I signed, my phone lit up for like an hour. Like it almost froze. Um, mainly because of the soccer team, football team. They were top 16 in Champions League. So anything – that attached them, their fans were all over. So um, it was nice, man. I get out there, uh, they're rolling. So for me, I just wanted to go fit in. I didn't want to mess up anything that they were already doing while, you know, allow me to get back into shape and game shape and my rhythm back from in all for seven weeks. Um, and it was cool, man. Beautiful arena, beautiful country. Coach was cool. Guys were cool. And um, so I was there for like a month and a half, maybe. And the guy I was coming to replace, he had a season in the injury. Um, and then he ends up probably because I signed there. You know, they these guys know me. He's probably like, no, nah, nah, I got to get back. 
and he tries to come back and now management is in a dilemma basically um because this is a guy they have under contract for like two more years and they was paying him um paying him a lot of money so they didn't want to pay him pay me he's there last year um it was a whole it was some other things going on behind the scenes and um I, I just kind of just in the situation after a while. Um I could have stayed and got my money, but uh, I talked to the agents and my family and they were just like, you know, I wanted to end the season playing. So that's when Romania came. Rapid, it was a new team, um, ton of money. Had uh Darius um Johnson Odom for a lot of money. Um, but he gets hurt, he leaves. Had a lot of big name guys, imports that I recognized again. Tyler Stone, he was in France with me. Uh, Lithuanian did by this. He was on the Lithuanian national team that beat the USA this summer. So we had a lot of like good, good, good imports. What I didn't know is we did not have good Romanian players. <laughs> like they were young, they were kids. Because um, they didn't want to play for that coach. And I did not know it was a rule that you had to have a certain amount of locals on the court. So I get there with a crazy coach, with young kids, and it was just, it was just an experience. But I tried to make the best of it. Um, played pretty well, but that was 2023. Was a, it was a, it was a rough year. It was a rough year, interesting year. Let me use that. And so you arrived here on a podcast to tell everyone about it. Now I'm back. As I'm one back does. I'm back. I'm <laughs> back to talk about it. Back to talk about it. So I mean, I learned from everything. I ended it healthy. Um, even after that season, after the end of last year, I just I just took some time, spending with my kid. Um, my grandfather had passed in the playoffs, in the third, fourth place game out here, and I, I don't really want to play for third, fourth place anyway. So when that happened, I'm like, man, I'm, what, what, what are we doing? What are we playing for? So. I left, went home, just spent a lot of time with my family, my son, got 100% healthy, and now I decided now was like the perfect time to come back. In our house, when we use a VPN, we are sure to use NordVPN. NordVPN secures up to six devices and is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and even your Wi-Fi router. Plus, it's no risk to your wallet. Head over to their website for pricing or contact customer support 24-7. And remember, your purchase is always safe with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in the video description to use our code and make sure you're secure with Nord VPN. And so since you're on this podcast, let's talk about your current uh, situation in Romania, where you are now, how this season is going. Um, take us through uh, the last couple of months. Well, yeah, um, just... I just was on family time, man. You know, I'm getting a lot of deals, get a lot of offers. And once again, I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Nothing made me jump. And I was so scared, as you guys can see over the last two years, to just get in another bad situation. I'm getting older. I'm like, I need to get back to to being me, play how I play, um, and, and be in a good, stable situation. So... I was close, man. I had some stuff in the Middle East I was thinking about doing. Um, and then the war in Israel kind of messed a lot of stuff up. Um, my guy V Sanford, he yeah, y'all did an interview with V, right? We did. It's Sanford. Yeah, yeah, he was out there. So I mean that kind of messed up the landscape of everything. And um, so once again, I just was being patient. And my coach here in Romania, he's Lithuanian. So I played against him in that third, fourth place game last season. And in Lithuania a couple years ago. So he called me and was like, hey, look, man, like, I don't know what you got going on or what you want to do, but like, I need you. Um, I want you to come here, play how you play, how I know you can play. And just basically gave me the keys. And that's the only type of situation I was looking for, um, to just go be me again. And, you know, I, I got out here maybe three weeks ago, right to it. Um, Three days of practice, game, right off the plane. It's kind of been, it's been a little tough, you know. I'm not as young as I used to be, but I mean, it's, it's, it's going well. Um, I've been in this league two other times, so I'm familiar with the local guys and um, how this coach likes to play. So, I mean, right now we're we good. We just lost 
two days ago on the road, eight hour trip. It was just tough, just tough travel. A McDonald player. I sprained my wrist the game before, so it was mm -hmm. it was tough to really shoot from distance. But I mean, it's going pretty well. I can't I can't really complain about the basketball right now. Um, I think I'm like 17 a game right now, 17 and six. So I'm sure the rest of Europe is going to start calling in the next two to three weeks. So I might got to be back on in, the, in two months. I might be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to have you back again to talk about it. Yeah, that's fine by us. Yeah. So no, nah, it's it's good. I'm just I'm just happy to be in a situation where I could be me again. I took the time to get healthy, get my mental right, and uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'm in a good place. So before we close out here, and you're even though you're in a good spot, uh, it is something that's popped up on the pod before where we talk about. You know, like you said, get right off the plane, right to practice or a game. Let's get into that specifically. What was that like in terms of what was your flight? When did you land? You know, when did you take off? And what were you asked to do almost? You know, what was the timeline there? Let's get oh, into man. the nitty gritty on that. <laughs> so my son's birthday, December 7th. They were calling. That was a Thursday. So they, they might have started calling on a Monday. Right after they lost the FIBA Cup, they were eliminated. So they started calling and I knew what was going on. So I'm like not even answering the phone because I'm like, I, I done made it this long. I'm going to be here for his first birthday. So then I had to tell him like, I can leave Monday. And they were playing the next Saturday. So I get through the weekend. You know, y'all know, hectic with kids, birthdays. <laughs> hectic. It's first one, family in town. It's a lot going on. Um, and I still have to train in between all of this. Um, and so I leave Monday night from Dulles. Flight delayed. 10.30, flight delayed. They're like, it's going to leave at 2.30. Like, okay, cool. All right, I'm, all right, I'm here. What up? But now I'm going to miss the connecting flight. Because I had straight, I had DC to Munich, Munich straight to this city. Now that's all messed up. So I'm going through options. They're telling me all this stuff. And I'm telling my agent, like, look, I'm just going to miss this. Like, I'm not about to stay in some random town or stay in Munich for 10, 12 hours in the airport. Like, I'm not doing that. I'll catch you tomorrow. He's like, I'll just try. They need you there. They want you, you know, to get acclimated with the team and the plays and all of that. So I end up, I end up getting the flight. Um, I had to stay in Munich five hours, then fly to another city in Romania that was three hours away from here. So I'm in the airport for six hours from eight to two thirty. A.M. Flight of Munich. I land in Munich at three. The flight was at nine thirty, so a six-hour layover. I land in, in that city at twelve. Then I got a three-hour drive. Get to the apartment at three thirty-four, and next day right to it. Practice. They threw every play at me. Twenty plays. I got a headache. I'm tired hungry <laughs> like it's it's just right to it then waits another practice travel now I'm back on the road four hour trip game I'm like yo I barely know my teammates names at this point like what is going on and I gotta go you know perform uh we won the game I think I had 14 and 7 but it's just that quick turnaround was I, like if I wasn't in shape and working it would have been it would have been very 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 tough, but um, this whole time I was in D.C. Actually, John was with me. He's in Romania too right now. Uh, Aldridge. Um, I just missed that game playing them, but he was with me. We had the same trainer. Um, we were playing pickup. Me, him, Quinn Cook, uh, my boy Isaiah Tate. Come when he's not coaching. Uh, it, it's just a bunch of guys. You know that area is so. It's, it's just so many guys. James Giss, like I could think of a hundred people that's going to keep coming in. So we had a good group of guys that were playing and that just really kept me going. It kept me ready, kept me pretty sharp um, and allowed me to pretty much be doing what I'm doing now. The DMV is kind of a little bit of an embarrassment of riches when it comes to basketball. That's for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the best. I think it's the best. In the, probably in the country. If not, it's top two, top three, easy. 
it's just so many guys and guys just pop in. He's like, yo, like, when did you move here? Like, it, or you just forget about guys because there's so many people. And even the guys that do not play anymore, they can still play. Like, it's still respectable runs. So I think all of that, we still got a group chat. They, they keep us sharp, man. And I'm, I'm super appreciative for it. That'll do it for this episode of Expat Hoop Revisiting with J3. Reminder to follow us on social media like Instagram at Expat Hoops and subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us wherever you get your audio podcasts. Also, you can help support on Patreon where our members get additional content and benefits. It's a win-win for you, so help support the pod there as we continue to bring interviews from across the world. J3, thank you for being on the pod today, but we do have some Expat Extras. Are you willing to stick around a little bit for those? Yes, sir. Hello, and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like, and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here, so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.